ಕ್ಯಾಂಚನಾಚಲಾಖಾಯಾಕ್ಷುರುಂಗಿಧಾಂಜೇನಾಸ್ಮೈಶ್ರೀಗುರವೇ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪಾಕದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀಗುರ ಶ್ರೀಯುಥಾಪದಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀಗುರು ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಗ್ರಚಾಥಾಹಕಂಡಾರಘುನಾಥ ಸಜೀವಂ ಸಾತ್ವಿತ ಸಾಪದೂತ ಪರಿಜನಾಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣಚೈತನ್ಯೇವೀರಾಧ ಸಹಕನಾಲಿತಾಂಶುನಾ ಸಿಂಧು ದೀನಾಬಂಧು ಜಗತ್ಪತೆ ಕೋಪೇಶ ಗೋಪಿಖಂಡ ರಾಧಾಖಂಡ ನಮೋಸ್ತೆ ತಪ್ತಖಂಸನ ಗೌರಂಗಿ ರಾಧೆ ಬೃಂದಾವನೇಶ್ವರಿ ಸಖಾನು ಸುಧೆ ದೇವಿ ಪ್ರಣಮಿ ಹರಿ ಪ್ರಿಯ ವಂಶಕಲ್ಪತರುಭ್ಯ ಸಿಂಧುಭ್ಯ ಪತಿಭಾವನೆಭ್ಯೋ ವೈಷ್ಣವೇಭ್ಯೋ ನಮೋ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಪ್ರಭು ನಿತ್ಯಾನಂದ ಶ್ರೀಯದ್ವೈತಾಧಾರ ಶ್ರೀವಾಸತಿ ಗೌರಭಕ್ತವೃಂದ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೇ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರಿ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರಿ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರಿ ಹರಿ ಹರೇ ಕೃಷ್ಣ grateful to all of you for being with us today shishiratha gopinath temple every sunday we come together actually every morning we come together but not so many of you show up <laughs> but sunday so many people come it is a wonderful meeting together with our extended family to the extent we develop broader and broader vision and appreciation of who our family is to that extent we actually could experience the reality of who we are <clears throat> under the misconception that i am or we are material bodies only we have a very small family and even within those families there are so many things to disagree about to fight about 
to separate over because the bodies are just temporary vehicles for the eternal soul. On the spiritual platform, ahambi japratapita, we understand our relationship with Krishna. Krishna is the mother, the father of every living being. And in that sense, we see the trees, the plants, the insects, the lizards, the birds, the beasts, and even all the varieties of human beings, the varieties of races, religions, psychological mindsets. There is inconceivable, infinite variety among people. And in that sense, even whoever is living in other planets, in other universes, we understand, we appreciate, it is all our family. The association of devotees or sadhu sangam, satsang, is where bodies of people come together to inspire this realization of life. Coming on Sunday, we're coming out of our little houses where sometimes we think, I am the proprietor. Usually in a place like Bombay, you're just leasing or renting. But still we think this is my house. But when we come to the Lord's temple, we recognize this is not my house. This is God's house. And everyone that's coming is coming to remind each other, to inspire each other, to recognize that. And to take that precious understanding, Sarva Loka Maheshwaram, to our homes, to our offices, on the trains, in the traffic jams, wherever we may go. We remember our connection to the divine. Krishna. Yes, everyone is part of our family and therefore love and compassion is the natural outreach of the heart for every living being to those who know Krishna or God. The family of the devotees is very special very intimate because we share that realization among ourselves and together out of love for every living being in a unified way we try to share that realization with the world my father of this material body was here for ten days. He left today. And he had this realization which was quite incredible for him. A person who worked and struggled his whole life to somehow or other maintain, sustain, and raise 
a family of five people. And he was considered very magnanimous because he extended it to his parents, to his brothers and sisters, which in America that isn't done so much. But coming here, he actually had the experience of a real family beyond just blood relationships. A family of dozens, hundreds, even thousands of people. On the spiritual platform. And I can't ever remember seeing him so happy because he was experiencing that spiritual connection in the family of devotees. And even he said he hasn't been he hasn't had so much energy and happiness practically as long as he could remember. And in our congregation, on many occasions, somebody very dear in the family passes from this world, the inevitable, the inevitable reality of death comes upon all of us, sometime or another. And then, that crisis they gain such a deep appreciation of such a broader greater family family of those who are striving to love Krishna so coming on Sunday or festivals is very sacred and very important for our spiritual lives. In understanding the family of Vaishnavas, we can really connect to the universal family of Sri Sri Radha Gopinath. It's all living beings in all spiritual and all material worlds. That realization beyond theory is actually understood, realized according to our enthusiasm to serve without material motivations, without selfish ego. Lord Chaitanya prays, na dhanam na janam na sundarim kavitam vaja kadisha kamaye, mama janamani janamani shwari bhavata bhakti rahoyit ki tvai. I do not desire wealth or power, the beauties and charms that the world provides. nor do I want liberation from suffering. Wherever I may take birth, whatever situation I may be in, just bless me that I may serve you unconditionally. To the degree our service attitude is unconditional, to that degree we are liberated liberated from the shackles of mundane limitations. And it's the only happiness. Happiness cannot be bought. 
cannot be achieved by any material acquisition or accomplishment. Happiness is when the love of our heart is awakened through unconditional service. The last couple days Makara Sankranti has been observed and across the town at Radharas Bihari temple in Juhu there was a wonderful festival the festival of the installation of Sri Radharas Bihari it is interesting It didn't come easy. There was a great battle, a non-violent battle that went on for several years. Srila Prabhupada he left Bombay in 1965 with the idea to take the message of Lord Chaitanya across the ocean to the whole world and nothing came easy for him his idea in Bombay was to get a free ticket on a cargo ship to America he came from Vrindavan to Bombay that's what it was called in those days he left his beautiful home in Sri Radha Damodar temple where he was surrounded by temple bells the greeting of everyone is Hare Krishna Radhe Radhe Jai Shri Radhe and in those days in Vrindavan for those of you who were alive then and went there very quiet forest very simple practically no commercial enterprises it was a place pilgrimage for those who were very sincere devotees of Krishna but as far as residence it was for very very dedicated people who wanted nothing but loving service and worship of the Supreme Lord he left there to come to Mumbai of course Mumbai in 1965 was nothing like it is now either if we go back to 1965 and now when I look at it I first came to these places in 1971 from an external feature of what you see and what you your senses connect with today Brindavan is kind of like what Bombay was in 1965. <laughs> so you can imagine what Bombay is like now. You don't have to imagine, just walk on the street. And it wasn't that he just went into Sumati Murarji and said, please give me a ticket. And she said, oh, Swamiji, anything for you. She said, no, I refuse. I will not give you a ticket. If I give you passage, you will die. Very 38 days on the sea. You're 70 years old. 
when you arrive in New York, it's very cold, you don't know anyone, no one will care about your message, no one will care about you. Srila Prabhupada begged. He sat on the step of her office and wouldn't eat or drink anything until she gave him the ticket. She, she couldn't even face him. She sent out her secretary to bring him water, to bring him food, to bring him in. He said, not until I get ticket. He wasn't begging for himself. He was begging for all living beings. Begging for the chance to serve. And when he came across two oceans, two continents, and arrived in the United States of America, he wanted nothing for himself. He came to give. A person who materially had nothing was giving the highest wealth to people in a country that had more than anybody else in the world materially <coughs> many of us know the struggle Srila Prabhupada endured the reversals the illnesses heart attacks, strokes so many other types of physical ailments, death threats, poverty. He could have come back. But for him it was an honor, it was a privilege to serve his Guru Maharaj, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati, in this very special and intimate way. When we are actually Krishna conscious, when there is reversals, when there is difficulties or even sufferings in trying to execute our service, it creates a sense of intimacy in the heart. Because things that are easy are often taken cheaply. And it takes a person who is very sincere, who really wants to express their love, to carry on when there's every reason to quit. And we all have the power to see it this way if we just pray for this vision. Bhakti Vinod Thakur prayed. And his words are to give us the opportunity to enter into this spirit. When we read the prayers of great personalities, their prayers are not just displaying their own spiritual greatness, but they are opening the door for us to enter into that spiritual greatness. By deeply appreciating these prayers, we have the chance to access that same spirit of selfless devotion. Thakur Bhakti Vinod said, the inconveniences, difficulties, even sufferings that I may endure in serving you, Krishna, are the source of my greatest happiness. Because they do create a sense of deep intimacy. Whatever may happen, Krishna, still I'm doing it for you. 
gives us a chance to express higher levels of selfless love. And in that love, Krishna reciprocates. Yegatamam prapadyante tamstataiva bhajamyaham. And there's intimacy. And Srila Prabhupada was on Jaladuta, he prayed. Let me be your puppet and dance according to how you want me to dance. I am yours. I don't know why you have sent me here. Please empower me to do your will. And after much struggle, an incredible historical manifestation of compassion, where he never complained. It's always grateful for any opportunity to serve. Srila Prabhupada, his enthusiasm was to reach the hearts of every living entity with the matchless gift of pure devotion. But at the same time, he was so grateful, even if one person would receive it. We read in his diary, he played a recording that he made explaining the Maha Mantra. And there were just four or five people that came. Srila Prabhupada was so encouraged, so excited. Four, four or five people came and they liked the prasad I gave. He was just giving little slices of apples. They liked the prasad and they liked the chanting and they seemed to like the message. Now I can understand that the great prophecy of the Acharyas that this movement will spread throughout the world will take place. Now for many of us, if four or five people come, (laughs) we're not so excited like this. When one semi-crazy person invited Srila Prabhupada to, to his Bowery loft. Bowery loft is in the old days in New York City in the Bowery there were warehouses where they would bring things in from ships and put them they, they were, even today You'll see in New York City there's there's pulleys and those little wheels where you take ropes, bring things and put them through the window. They'd store things. Just a warehouse. So he was living in a in a converted warehouse. No walls for rooms, just one big hall. Not very big. Now, for any of us, a place like that, in a ghetto, we're not very, it's, it's not a very prestigious place. And he had no followers. Just one person who said, you could live with me. And Prabhupada had to live with him on his terms. And Srila Prabhupada was writing back to India. We have a temple in America, in New York City. Our Gurudev's dream is being fulfilled. Every little opportunity, he was seeing it in such a positive way. And he was so grateful. 
And then the person he was living with actually attacked him to kill him for nothing because he was on some drugs, the person. And Prabhupada had to leave and he was, then he was completely homeless. But he continued. He took every situation. It's God's grace. Inconceivable. And ultimately, he had some followers and came back to India. In fact, two of those followers are with us today. Sham Sundar Prabhu and Yamuna Devi Prabhu. They were among the original devotees who came to India with Srila Prabhupada. And Madhusudan Prabhu and Kanchanabela. How do you pronounce? I'm sorry. She's sitting there. Please stand up. Is Madhusudan Prabhu here? Please stand up. They, they first came to Krishna consciousness in 26th Second Avenue. Is it 1966? 1967. Two of the original devotees of Srila mission. So he saw Prabhupada in those days. Both of you come and sit up here, please, now that you're standing up. Mataji, please come. Make a passage for her. Let us welcome them to Sri Radha Gopinath. Twenty six Second Avenue, that little storefront. Now it's all modern, decorated, and everything. But in those days, it was, it was really a run-down place. And maybe holds about 40, 50 people maximum. That's very crowded. <laughs> and right, right next door to a petrol station, and that was the entire International Society for Krishna Consciousness. Srila <laughs> Prabhupada registered the International Society for Krishna Consciousness, and that was it, that little storefront. And they, these two great souls lived there. So when Srila Prabhupada came back to India, there was many wonderful opportunities that he saw. And one of those was a dream to build a beautiful temple in Mumbai. And all the devotees were looking for some little piece of land or some little building here in South Bombay because in those days, this was Bombay. Juhu was like a distant farmland area. So they were looking, 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 and Prabhupada went and said, I want 
here, this piece of land. He said that before he came to America, Sumati Maharaji lived there. He used to look at that piece of land. And he had that thought, someday we will have something here. And all the devotees, at least the ones I talked to, they were wondering, why? Why, who, who is going to come here so far away? Srila Prabhupada said, soon this will be very much a center of the city, which it is today. And he lived with the devotees. in very primitive situations, mosquitoes, rats, malaria, and most all the neighbors really hated us, didn't want us around. And Prabhupada brought Radharas Bihari and put them in a tin shed, just a little shed, and that was it. And such a battle, because the person who was try- who, who supposedly sold us that little plot of land, his intention from the beginning was to cheat, take the money, because he sold it to several other people too. And he was a very powerful political figure with tremendous political ties with the media, with the government. He had money. Srila Prabhupada and his followers really had nothing. Prabhupada, he promised the deities, this is for you. And he fought for Krishna. And after many years of reversals that seemed that he was totally defeated, that there was no possibility. Physical threats, mafia, dacoits, politicians, government, police were all against. And he just gently worshipped Krishna and wouldn't leave. And ultimately, started building and government came people came to tear it all down they kept building from about 1971 or two until his disappearance from this world He never gave up. And just before he left left us, he understood that everything was secure. And Radha Raspihari had a beautiful temple. It was a great, beautiful grand opening on Makara Sankranti. Why so many challenges to great people? From a Vaishnav perspective, that's kind of the story of Makara Sankranti. It's the day that Bhishma departed from this world. We read in the Srimad Bhagavatam, Maharaj Yudhisthir and his brother, the Pandavas, they were the very personifications 
of religion, dharma, and morality. But yet they suffered so much throughout their entire lives. And finally, by Lord Krishna's will, there was the battle of Kurukshetra. Yudhisthira, Maharaj, Arjuna, and Krishna himself, the Supreme Lord, tried every possible means to avoid that conflict.